governments, uh, they don't make all the decisions in society, but they make a lot of the structural decisions. And climate change is a structural issue. It's like where do you do your planning, where you build these uh, things, what do you give permits to, how do you organize uh, your society such that people are nudged into doing things that are the right things uh, for the climate versus doing things that are destructive to the climate, right? Governments have an enormous uh, and subtle role to play uh, in, in guiding choices that uh, society makes. They're not very successful sometimes when they try and pick winners or when they try and say, let's do it this way. But they are quite successful at shifting cultures such that, you know, uh, better decisions in the end get made. And that's really where they need to be focusing. The governments should do what they say they're going to do about climate change. They should, they should not keep saying that they're going to do something and then do nothing at all. So they should abide by their own rules, their own guidance, their own words, their own policies. But they're not doing that at the moment. So governments need to be actually moving away from the rhetoric of climate change, just writing about it in government reports and delivering actually meaningful action. And virtually no governments around the world are doing that at the moment. They've been writing the right sort of reports for 10 or more years about the policy documents, but they've delivered nothing in terms of reducing emissions. So it is just really translating the policies into meaningful action. And that will require them to be much braver, have more courage, stand up to the lobby groups, particularly those from, from the vested interests in the industry, whether it's the fossil fuel industry, the car industry, and so forth. So they have to be much more courageous, show real leadership. And remember, they are there. They are appointed not by the, by the oil companies or by the car companies. They are put in, put in place generally by the population. So it's important that they remember that, that it is to us that they ha ultimately um, have to answer to. The government has to affect the structure of our, our, our societies. Um, my one of my previous answers, I mentioned mass transit, being able to take buses and, and trains and so forth, they're much more energy efficient than, than a personal automobile is, no matter whether it's an electric automobile or not. Um, mass transit will always win because you move more people for, for the same amount of capital and the same amount of energy resources. Um, and only governments can do that. I can't choose to have a ma bus magically appear. Um, and that's the kind of thing that government has to step up to do. It has to make the choices of whether to subsidize personal automobiles or whether to subsidize mass transit. Government has to decide how electricity gets generated. You know, I can't, well, now that I have solar panels, I kind of do have my own power plant, but that required regulatory changes in California because for a very long time you could not get them. The gr utilities would not allow you to connect solar panels. All those things required legislative changes and then changes to the regulatory structure that governs utilities and so on. Government has to do those things. We can't do them as individuals. Reduce subsidies to fossil fuels. Redirect those, uh, these are uh, over a billion dollars of subsidies that go to fossil fuel uh, energy uh, investments every year. Uh, you take that investment and you dedicate it to uh, environmental services, dedicated to the protecting the, the food systems, dedicated to, to uh, renewable energy sources, and I think that those, that would have a huge impact.